What's up, everybody? This is Two. You're listening to a Non K podcast, uh, No Eggs podcast. It is uh, myself, Two, and my co host over there, Peng Her. What's up, Peng? How you been? It's been a minute since we've been just you and I in this room. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of miss you, man. Um, yeah. we've, we've had guests for the last three episodes. Yeah, we have. And uh, I kind of miss just. Hanging just out, talk, just, just, just talking. you and I. Yeah, 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 because that's how we did the first few, and then we started having a few guests, which which is good, because I think we learned a lot just having guests, right? Yep, 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 because we had uh, James, Vang, yep, James, uh, uh, the um, uh, psych major. Yep, yep. Uh, and then and, we had Koo cool. from War Man Muay Thai. And we have a bunch of other guests, which we're not going to announce, but we have some guests lined up, too. Yeah. Yeah. So and doing it with guests is pretty interesting, um, because it took us a little while to understand each other's communication styles. Yeah. And so when you're doing it with a guest, like it's kind of you're taking a wild shot out there, and because like you don't you don't really know how they're gonna do their right. communication styles, and you're just kind of hoping and praying that it's good. And we were very lucky to have three. Amazing guests yeah. that were like really we, willing to talk. We also worked with, uh, or we also did podcasts with people who kind of, uh, who we kind of knew, right? So yeah, yeah. even though they had to navigate two personalities between my personality and your personality, they kind of knew us a little bit. And some yeah. of our future guests are going to be people that we don't really know. Yeah. And I think that's going to be a, a learning curve for yeah. us as well. So just so you know, if you want to start a podcast out there, uh, it's not hard, but it definitely still, we talk about. We talk about the podcast outside of the podcast to yeah. to to try to line up and be uh, kind of on the same page as best as we can. Yeah, there's a lot of prep work that you definitely don't see. Yeah, yeah. Um, so props to all those people that's been doing it for some time. Like, yeah, holy smokes! Like, I'm realizing. At first, I thought this was just gonna be all right. We meet up every once a week and we just kind of shoot the shit for an hour or two. Yeah, but it's not like that at no, all. No, because like, we we were just on a phone call with. Um, with uh, all that talk, all that talk yeah. and they, they said they were on 88 episodes yeah since 2020 yeah so 88 episodes that's at least uh, 88 hours times let's say triple that just for the preparation right, right? exactly so it's it's definitely time invested that they've put in yeah and uh, that's not including like editing the videos putting out clips yeah finding the people finding yeah. your guests find, like yeah, build, reaching and, out to people yep and then building an audience like how yeah. man how difficult is that but that's awesome that that's awesome that uh that they've been doing that that they are doing that so yeah so power sh- to you to you girls yeah so shout out for to doing them. all that yeah um but yeah so um dude i got bees this week yeah that's, that I saw was that, pretty yeah. cool um where'd you pick those up from from Ames Farms, so they're yeah, a local. Uh, they're Ames, local. the city. That's just what it's called. Is Ames uh, the city? No, here in Minnesota. No, no, no. it's just oh, okay. it's just what the farm is called. Okay. So they actually just came back from like Texas. They take their bees down to Texas and and pollinate the uh, bigger um, uh, bigger uh, farms down there, and they bring it back up for uh, for the summer. And so I picked up a couple of bees cuz i lost all my bees during the winter time. Yeah. So it's, do they do they ever make it through a winter? Does do bees? They do. They, they do. do? Yeah, oh, they do. Yeah. Actually as i was like cleaning up and setting up um i saw um like honey bees like from maybe a neighboring hive or just like a wild one uh just kind of buzzing around my old boxes and that that felt kind of nice. But it was um it's nice to be around bees again, man. Yeah. Uh, it's like a humbling feeling, you know. You know when you when you're around the bees and a lot of them and they're all buzzing, like it shakes you to the core, man. Your yeah. bones are rattling because it's it, it triggers something deep inside yeah. of you, like to to run away. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm sure the body goes into an automatic like uh, defensive, like fight or I mean, fight or flight is often experienced around bees. Yeah, you know. So, but I mean, yes, you're in a suit, but do they ever get? Do they get through the suit? Can they get through the uh, suit? I haven't unless been you have a leak. Yeah, I haven't been stung with the suit. Um, without the suit, I've I've been stung a few times, but not not through the suit. No. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we'll have to get you guys out there. It's it's yeah. pretty sweet. It's, we it's were, a cool feeling. Yeah, we were talking about doing an episode too. Yeah. Or e- yeah, f- either for this podcast for another one where I would actually go to yeah, uh, Pank's farm and like get suited up and try it out. Oh, I've yeah. done it actually one time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've done it one time in like uh, maybe four years ago because my uncle in France uh, does it. 
Really? And so he actually geared me up, and like we went and opened up everything, oh, and then he like uh, showed me his extraction process and yeah. kind of gave us some bottles to go back to. But yeah, no, it's. Dang it! Here I thought I was the only monk person that did that. Well, I mean, he's <laughs> he's he's uh, much older than you, and yeah. he's in France. So okay, all right, that doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I saw this interesting video. Uh, it was of you skating. Like, was oh, yeah, that, that when you were in high school? Were you in high school then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in high school. So I, I dude, yeah, you were good. Yeah, yeah. I used to skate uh, from and rollerblading. Yeah. For you, those of you listening, rollerblading and and not just putting on rollerblades and going around the lake. That is not yeah. the type of rollerblading I did. I did holding, the type of rollerblading. Hands with your friends. Yeah, not not that. <laughs> Although that's that's cool too. But I used to do the the rollerblading yeah. where it's the four wheels with the little gap in the center, and then you uh-huh. like will ride down. Yeah. Uh, rails and and ramps if you've ever watched old school eggs games yeah you probably saw it before it's called aggressive rollerblading but okay i did that from like i think 13 all the way till i mean i technically still do it i can still hop on some rollerblades right. now and i could probably still hit a rail but uh yeah i did that all through high school man i was i was that was i was die hard like yeah. that was all that i did I didn't study in school. Like high school to me was a period in time that was a blur when it came to like actually like what high school is meant to be, which yeah. is learning and and developing and creating little social circles with your yeah. friends. I had none of that. I was really? no, I had none of that. My whole world was how do I become the best rollerblader possible? Wow, that, that was like my entire world. That's what every day I would come home from work, uh, from work from school. I would get yeah. home and I would just lay on the floor. Put on my VHS tapes, yeah, and watch rollerblading wow. all the time. You were that serious? I was that, that serious, it? dude. My wow. whole goal was like, how do I get sponsored? How do I get good enough to be known and be a pro? Okay, that was like my whole soul focus. And I remember my dad one time told me too. This is a funny lesson uh, because I always remember it. My dad said, if you put this much effort into anything else like school, or if you put as as much effort that you in school as you do rollerblading, you'd probably be really really good. Yeah. And I'm like. Yeah, whatever. I don't really care. I just want to skate. But yeah. thinking back, he's right. The amount of time that I committed to that thing, if I just committed or or, or divided my energy a little bit better, maybe I would have done better in school. Because I left high school with a one point four GPA. One point four. That's Holy <laughs> shit. I thought I was that. Yeah, that's I had weird. a two point eight. Yeah, yeah. one point four, yeah. which is barely like were you even in school? And I, yeah. I, I kind of wasn't, dude. I kind of yeah. wasn't. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Really? I kind of wasn't. I, I skipped would not school have a ton. That. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, I guess it fits the stereotype of a skater, though, like a punk. Oh, uh, I was. Yeah. I was. I was a punk so all the way you, through, huh? man. Wow. All the way through. Um, how did you get into skating, and then how far did you get into it? Because you were really trying to take it to the next yeah. Level. So, so skating actually, I I saw it on. Uh, I was in. I think I was in eighth grade, and I watched. Um, they used to have this show on TV called the Guinness World Record. Yep. Uh, and, and they, it would be like on the, in the evening, on the weekend, like a Friday or whatever. I don't remember what on Fox or whatever, but it'd be just an episode, uh, an hour where people would be breaking records, right? And there's one guy, I remember his name, it was like Jason Stinsman from France or something. And he did the first double backflip according to yep. the TV show at the time, which is like 2002. So it's a long time ago. Yeah. And I saw it and I was like, wow, that's so cool. Like, I want to do that. Yeah. And then. Yeah, and then for my 14th birthday, I was like, hey, Dad, I'd like some rollerblades, which I'm really surprised that he bought. Yeah. Uh, he was like, why? You're never going to use these. Why don't you like, get clothes or something? Yeah. Like, you're never going to use these. You're going to use them for the summer and be done. Yeah. I mean, I would probably say the same if I had a 14-year-old. Like, yeah. what? You want rollerblades, yeah. dude? It's kind of, you're 14 years old, man. Yeah. But I think he, he had no idea, you know. He thought I just want rollerblades to go rollerblade around yeah. the block, you know. Little did he know. Little did he yeah. know, yeah. It was going to be every, something that I do every single day, every single night. Every I mean, it was literally just my world. Like, wow. I, I was consumed in that, you know. And yeah. so I would skip school to go skate. I would really? I would be in class. I remember being, like, in, in high school. Instead of, like, listening to teacher, I'd be drawing, like, prototypes of... I guess maybe that's where my entrepreneurship maybe yeah, yeah. developed. Is yeah. I would be drawing, like prototypes of skates that i think that i would want to create as a company yeah. and stuff yeah yeah it was weird That's, it was it was a it was it was interesting it was 
Yeah, so it's you're like the skating background. The people that you skated with, were they in high school with you? You no. said you didn't really yeah. hang out with people. In yeah, high- and I, yeah, exactly. So yeah. like rollerblading is kind of like a smaller community, even today. It's not like skateboarding or like BMX yeah. where people are used to, where there's a lot of people, or snowboarding. There's yeah. a ton of people. So rollerblading is kind of small, but uh, back in the day in Minnesota, they used to have a website called Skeptic Industries, mm-hmm. which was uh, just a bunch of local Minnesota rollerbladers. Uh, where we were all about the same age, like anywhere from like 11 to 19, you know, a yeah. bunch of teenagers. And uh, yeah, that's how I met a lot of people. And then there, there used to be a couple pro skate videos out of Minnesota as well that I used to watch. Yeah. And then I'd be like, wow, okay, Billy Lanham, Mike French, Derek French. Okay, those are the pros wow. in Minnesota. Yeah. Okay, I need to be friends with these guys. You know, I need to learn. I need to somehow cross these guys' paths so I can go yeah. learn from them and like skate with them and yeah. get motivated by them. And were they pretty accessible? Like, were you able to reach out to them? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're just all regular teenagers. But when you're 14, learning, you're like, I mean, they're they're like, uh, they were like pros. Yeah. But they're just 17 year old kids, you know, 17 yeah. year old pros. But to you, as a 14 year old trying to start, they're like legendary. Like, man, yeah. how do I, how can I actually go? meet this guy eventually i did meet to I, I got to eventually meet all these role players that i used to watch i got to meet them all and become their friends and wow, eventually yeah. even reached probably almost similar levels of skating as well you yeah. know and yeah because you were doing some pretty amazing things well you even did a promo video on your skates uh oh yeah for my shop it, yeah 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 i think the well the if if we if we're if we can if we put an accolade to it i guess the highest level that i ever got would be like junior year where I, I, I entered a, a, a street competition. So it's not a skate park or nothing. It's just you just go from one school to the next and like with yeah. an obstacle. And it was, uh, I think, like 70 skaters entered from like all over Iowa. Chicago, there were Chicago oh. kids here that were here, Twin City kids. And uh, and I won that whole thing. And there was oh, only like, shit. there's not like a one, two, three. It was just a one person wins the whole yeah. thing. And I won that whole thing when I was like 16 or 17. And I was like, damn, oh, fuck. Now I'm finally, like, I got to yeah. a level where I always never thought that I could, like, win an actual street contest. Yeah. Which in blading means that you have both, you're both pretty technical in the different types of tricks you know how to do. Yeah. But you're also probably pretty ballsy because the spots usually get harder and harder. Like, you'll start, right. like, for example, at a school with a small spot. Yeah. The second spot will be a little crazier. And usually third spot is usually pretty crazy. Wow. Third spot is usually the spot where it's like, you better be pretty good to skate this spot. Like most people who are not yeah. that good will not skate this spot. Yeah. And uh, I remember it was actually in Minneapolis, I think, but it was like um, it was like a rail down like a, I want to say like a sixty step rail, so like super long, <laughs> super steep. Yeah. And I was just, I don't know, that day I was just on, man. I was just in the zone. I was huh? throwing Dude, down, man. Awesome. Yeah. How can we never talk about that? Down. Like that's a. There's a video game, out yeah. there that I was trying to find of that street contest oh, that, that I won that, that whole thing. But I reached out to my old buddy, but I think he deleted the video. It used to oh, be on Vimeo never. or something. Yeah. But yeah, man, that was my high school kind yeah. of. Yeah. And a 1.4. Talk about 1.4. that. 1.4. Come on, I bet your your dad was pissed. Oh man. Yeah. So back in back, in, so I went to Lakeville High School. Well, yeah. I went to Harding High School first yeah. for for like a year which is in St. Paul, and then I ended up going to... My parents moved, I think, partially because of me, probably, to try yeah. to get me out of the cities Okay, and moved to Lakeville. So I went to Lakeville North. Um, yeah. But like I said, my whole world was skating, so school... And it's a, it's a battle that I have today, too, where I always think that like, not every kid is meant for th- yeah. that type of system, yeah. right? Because if I look at myself, and I'm in... And just looking at myself, I've been able to do okay after school, mm-hmm. like after high school, right? Because yeah. I've, because it's yeah. a little bit more free. You get to like yeah. choose what you want to do. Yeah. And in school, I was, I was, I was not interested in learning about uh, all the subjects in school. Yeah. Math didn't matter to me. History, I'm like you know, typical high school. Like, what, what am I gonna do with all this stuff? Right. Now, now I, I see the value of it. Now I, I still kind of believe the same thing that I believed yeah. back then, yeah. but. But yeah, it's just nothing in school to me was going to apply to what I wanted to do yeah. in that time frame as a 16-year-old. You yeah. Know? Well, you're not wrong because like, I think you realize like in life, like it, it is just about finding something you like to do and sticking with it and being de- being determined, right? And I think you, you did that through skating and then now with, yeah. all, now with your business. Yeah. Um, 
man, that's that's so crazy. Like one point four. Like one point four. I, I never went. So yeah. when I was, so my parents always went to work early, mm-hmm. and uh, so basically, I, I I did have my permit by the time I was sixteen, and and uh, I was spoiled enough that my parents allowed me to have a car as well. Yeah, nineteen ninety one Camry. Heck, heck yeah. 91 Camry shit were great. We're great. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're great. But because because they would already be at work and I live we lived all the way out in Elko, you know. Yeah. And I went to Lakeville High School. But it was up to me to take myself to school. There were school buses, but by the time I had my car, I could just drive myself. Yeah. And literally every day I would wake up at like, you know, school starts at like high school starts. I don't know what at, at the time it was probably like eight. eight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't even get up to like ten thirty. And then I would just Make my way to school, yeah. As if like I'm making my own schedule, you know. Dude, as if like yeah. as if the school schedule doesn't even matter. Like yeah. I'm just like I'm gonna get up now because I'm done sleeping, and I'll just go to school. Even though uh-huh. I'm, I know I'm not gonna do nothing when I get there, but I'm just gonna go because that's why I'm supposed to go. And uh, I did that for like six, seven months, and then my parents there was a software that actually would tell you your kids' attendance, and my yeah. mom looked at it and she's like, "Why are you never like in school from like period one to yeah. three? I was like, I don't know. I just don't. I'm tired. I don't want to go to school. Holy shit. And Dude, eventually, you were a badass. Yeah. And yeah. eventually, the principal called me in the office and was like, hey, listen, man, we can't have you in this school because you're never attend, blah, blah, blah. So then they kicked me out over to the Alternative Learning Center, the yeah. ALC. Really? Yeah. Halfway through my senior year, yeah. they kicked me out. And they were like, sorry, can't have you here. Yeah. So Holy then I went shit. to ALC. I went to ALC and... I don't know. Eventually graduated, graduated from there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. By then, I knew I was going to the Marine Corps, so okay. It kind of, it kind of put a, it gave me like, I knew that I had to finish, at least finish, school. at least finish school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be honest, if I could go back, I wish I would have just went to ALC from the freshman year because ALC is super easy. Yeah, and they just don't bullshit with you. It's like fill out these papers and and you'll have your 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 grades. Yeah, because yeah. I went to school in the inner city, and so we had, like, a alternative school, but that was, like, the bad, bad yeah. kids. Was it kind of like that over there? Yeah, yeah, it was, but I never considered myself a bad kid, you know? I yeah. just didn't like the, like, truly just didn't like the the system, and, like, I just, yeah. not that I thought about it that way. Now I think about it like that, but at the time, I just didn't like, I just didn't want to be in these classrooms yeah. where like I'm learning stuff that I really don't care about. Yeah. And I always, that's the thing that I still hold today as an adult, even though I understand and like I do support the school system and what it does and what it teaches. My wife's a teacher, so I I have to. <laughs> but it's just some kids I just don't think are meant to be locked in right. like that, right. you know? Yeah. Well, think about it. I was just talking about it with my wife yesterday. When we're eight, nine, ten years old, a real kid, we have so much energy. We should probably shouldn't be sitting at a desk for like eight hours. Yeah, you know, tough. you should be in recess for like seven hours and then one hour of learning. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you learn a lot in recess too. You yeah. know, yeah. and you could well, be playing games or you could do social skills. Playing, exactly. Uh, yeah, just learning. Yeah, learning how to get along with yeah. other kids. Yeah. So it's, I'm not shitting like on that. education. I'm just saying I think there's different ways where kids can learn. Yeah. And it's not necessarily just the one way that is implemented in our country. But yeah. I think you're totally right about that. Like, I definitely, like, struggled. Like, I am, like, uh, uh, yeah, how was it for you? D- d- dyslectic, you know? Like, yeah, I yeah, just yeah. Have, like, I can't read at all. I read at, like, right now, I read at, like, like a fifth grade level. Yeah. Um, um, and I realized that in college, it was just like, this is not for me at all. Like, I, yeah. like, like but I you said, made I it all the way through college. You graduated yeah. college, yep. right? Like, yeah. I, I forced myself the same way where you, you said that if you applied yourself, um, or your father said if you applied yourself to anything yeah, else yeah. or to schooling, uh, with you, with what you did in skating, like I had that s- similar mindset. It was like I knew I could do this because I, I played football, I wrestled, yeah, uh, and then I bodybuilded in high school, so I always had discipline, and I would I I just knew I had to like apply it to school, yeah. Like I remember like in college, like where my friends would go and party and stuff like that. I would have to spend like an extra two or three hours like reading bec- like the a textbook, uh, just because like I would have to read a page like three times over just to get it. So it'd take me like three times as long just to do like any one thing. And then plus on top of that, I read at like a fifth grade level, so it just like this that same mindset. Yeah, I just I did apply it to school, but as soon as I got out of there, I was, I knew I I wanted to graduate college, 
But once I got out of there, I was just like, I'm done. I'm like, I did whatever I could to graduate. And then yeah. I knew I had no, didn't want to go back to grad school or anything like that. And, um, you know, like through college and high school, I, uh, more than academic, like I just skimmed along, but like I, I realized I charmed a lot of like, yeah, like I, you figured out a way to navigate yeah, the space. Yeah, yeah, like I remember like one time, like in, in Japanese class, eventually, you know, I got really cool with the teacher. Like that's one thing that I can do. Like I could, I could, mm-hmm. yeah, I could be like, I, I could charm somebody, I could impress somebody, right? Or I could just get along with people. My Japanese teacher eventually just told me, hey, don't, don't sign up for my class again. I don't want to get her in trouble. But she was like, don't sign up for my class again next year. I'm just going to pass you. But yeah. I failed, dude. I slept every day. Yeah, I, yeah. I had detention every day. and that. But like when she gave me detention every day, I ended up coming in every day after school before wrestling practice, washing her boards, like sweeping up her class and, and stuff like that. And I ended up building this like really cool relationship with her. Um. So we were like, you know, you know, we, uh, so she would like help me out a lot. Yeah. So she eventually was just like, Hey dude, don't sign up for my stuff anymore. And I'm going to pass you. Yeah. But like I carried that through college, uh, and everywhere else. So like in college, all my professors, I would sign up for like the tutoring sessions. I would just apply myself yeah. and show that, um, uh, that I was trying. And here's a trick for college too. You're paying a lot of money to be there. Your professor's not gonna fail you if they if you show them that you're like applying yeah, yourself yeah. there, your professors aren't going to fail you. If you show them that you're trying, they're going to pass you. Like I went to there was a couple of struggling classes and I just knew that hey, if I raise my hand every time and even if I got the question wrong, like, yeah. I like it's gonna show that I'm trying. Uh, and like they grade on the curve, so they're going to help you along. Um, so I was able to pass them, and that's why I get I got like the minimum of like I would get my uh, you know I'd get my C plus, and then I'd be out of there, you know. Yeah. And so I was very in some classes I were but be- I I did do better in like math, like I was a math. Oh, wizard. you were good. Yeah, I loved math. Like it, weirdly, I loved math, and I was able to just. Like I got it, and like my brain registered really well. Math and science, reading or writing was really tough for me. Um, I remember my right, turning in a paper that literally was just like, oh, "This is my rough draft." You said it could be rough. I didn't do it, yeah. but also like my my English teachers were really great, and they gave me a lot of slack, and they gave me a lot of room to mess yeah. up. Yeah, so it sounds like you learned how to navigate school. Same thing in your yeah. own way. In your yep. own way, yep. it, it, it it's so funny how it's such a different experience for everybody. And, and you have daughters who, who are gonna be in school one day. Yeah. And you're gonna have to like figure out how they're going through school, right? Like yep. what is in their mind? Because, like, just you and I, way different, right? You, uh, you had issues with like feeling like you're dyslexic, or self-diagnosed di- dyslexic, and like, but you still got the work in versus. Me, I didn't do any of the work, yeah. even though I probably could have if I applied, right. but I just yeah. didn't apply. And and now we're like in our thirties, so this is like fifteen years back. And yeah, and um, yeah, we we can look back at like how everybody everybody interacts with high school, like so much different, and it's such a formative time in our yeah. in our life, yeah. like fourteen to eighteen, like you're trying to. So many things. You don't even know who you are. You're trying to prove yourself yep. to friends. You really care what people think about you. Yeah. You know, all those little yeah. things. You're, you're always well, worried about something. Someone's looking at you. And, and like, as an, as an adult, you say, hey, as an adult, I always tell other people, and I always remind myself, like, no one cares about you yeah. or what you're doing. Just do your do you. And you wish you could ingrain that. I wish I could ingrain that in myself at 16, but the truth is you you can't because as a 16-year-old, you're like, who are my friends? Who are the other groups of right. people in the school? Who are, who, who are these people judging me? Like, you're just, you're not, you haven't developed your your shield yet, you yeah. know? Well, I, I think we're, we're very similar, but I, I, I don't know this, but I'm just assuming based on what you told me, like, I, I'm guessing you didn't have, like, a... Like a lot of friends at the school, right? No, at the school, definitely not. Skater friends, I yeah. had a whole bunch. But skater yeah. friends, they were all like, at the time, they you could consider them all like little, 
rascals too, you know? Yeah. So you were probably in school like, what am I doing here? Like, yeah. the reason why I went was like, you know, I played football. Uh, so I had friends there. I wrestled. I had friends there. I had a lot of friends. And like, yeah. dude, I loved, I loved like chicks, you, but, you know? Yeah. And so th- that kept me. Well, you probably didn't mind going to school. I, I would assume it's not the same thing like going to school like me where I have no friends yeah. in the school besides a few friends that I yeah. connected with and everybody else I just didn't really care for like yeah. the preps and the jocks and all yeah. that stuff I didn't care for. But I assume the experience is different when you do play sports because now yeah. your friends that you play sports with it has nothing to do with like grades. It's just sports. Yep. They're the same friends that are also in school with you. Yeah, so like yeah. I went to school to see my friends. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. With, that must be kind of cool. People. Actually, if I could go back, I, I would do that. I would do it your way, you know? Yeah, like, I would have played sports. I yeah, I don't know if it was a, a, a good or bad thing. Yeah, I just kind of got lucky. Uh, at the time, too, like sports, I think, in the monk community is very different now, but like at the time, like nobody played organized sports. Yeah, so I was like right, one of right. the few One of the few monk kids that did. Like I remember it was like me and another kid playing football. Yeah. Um, you went uh, to Patrick Henry? I went to Patrick Henry. So yeah, North, That's North Minneapolis. North Minneapolis. I yeah. love that place. I lived like three blocks away, so I just <laughs> walked to school every day and walked home. Um, so that's why I was able to do all these sports. I was able to just stay late, Yeah. And, you know, for practices and then just walk home at the end of the night. Uh, but I love that place, man. Shout out to Patrick Henry. Uh, I know they're working on changing the name now, uh, but uh, for now, shout out to Patrick Henry. Um, but yeah, it was like a great place because you're in the city. Uh, so you're going to classes with some of the like poorest of poor, mm-hmm. but then yet you had some kids that would get busted in from North Minneapolis that were mi- very different. Yeah. Um, and so it's it it is like diversity. Heavy. Yeah. What was the um? Let's we're going back to our high school mindset. Yeah. When you walked into the lunchroom, was it like? What were the 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 ethnic groups that you saw? Yeah. So, Patrick so Henry, because that's, that's a that's North Minneapolis high school. You yeah, know? I would say this like, um, where you said there were jocks, and oh, hello. All right, now we're back. Yeah, there was a little interruption there. I had to yeah. deal with something here. This 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 podcast is in my shop. Yeah, uh, my everyday business. So we had a, I had to deal with something. Yeah, that was kind of cool to see, though. Like your business is growing. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's it's growing little by little. That de- definitely. Yeah. Um, and me being so new as a business owner, like I hope to be able to kind of do something similar and bring people, bring a team on or build a team. Yeah. Um, it's helpful. So it was like really cool to see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we were still we were still on our high school discussion. High school, yeah. Um, forget what we were talking about exactly, but. What I would say just overall is just like uh, high school was tough for me. The education piece was tough for me. Uh, one thing I did learn for sure was just like how to talk to people. I learned from a, uh, from high school and just dealing with so many di- different types of people. Like if you just smile at people, you just you make everybody in the room feel a lot more comfortable. And you can... Uh, you know, you can talk your way a lot. Yeah, of, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna ask you, know? you about too. Is like, you learn to navigate school. Yeah. In your own people, way to play yeah. sports and and the people side of it. Yeah. So I'm guessing you probably had some. You're probably. It sounds like you're pretty close with teachers. Yeah. Yeah. That you had right. Yeah. So some of my teachers now are still like my Facebook friends. Nice. Like uh, I was invited back to actually the, um, uh, the. The Japanese teacher invited me to like be a chaperone or on one of the field trips. Like it was actually really cool. Um, yeah, so I still see them. I think we went out to the bars like one time with with the teachers like a couple years back. Uh, it's really cool to, it's really it's really cool to just stay in touch and, and get to know your teachers like as a as a on a human level. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just such a interesting thing and like they gave me so much grace and like I I have so much to be grateful for. Because yeah, they taught me so much on about life on a human level and just like getting like how to build a relationship and how to uh, you know just just how to navigate. Things. Yeah. Now let me ask you: When you were in high school and you were talking to your teachers, did they feel like uh, 
Like, what did they feel like to you? Did they just feel like an older person trying to teach you things down? Or did they feel like an authority no, figure to you? Not at all. Not at all. Um, I felt uh, a closeness with them. Nice. Like, they were, they were great. I, you know, I was very fortunate to have phenomenal and great teachers that yeah. really cared about us, really looked out for us. Or at least they made me feel that right, way. Right, right, right. You know, and so... Um, I really enjoyed it, and uh, you know, and I think what was helpful was like for me, I was, um, I was somewhat of an outgoing kid. Yeah, so I was able right. to kind of, I was kind of outspoken in class. You know, um, if not directly with my teachers, but, you know, I had friends. Um, so, like, I, 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 I don't want, I don't want to say. St- stood out but like i i definitely uh, yeah you were you you were an engaging person yeah 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 so like that's like my one ability in life is just like i to I, engage yeah yeah it's probably why you podcast now you can yeah. talk well <laughs> like what i say now is like i've got a strong 10 minutes and uh you know i could talk to somebody and talk their heads off for 10 minutes and afterwards i'm just beat I'm yeah like, ah, i don't want to talk to no but that's freaking awesome that's yeah. something that i wish i would have done you know because um i've heard that a lot from a lot of different kids a lot of different people, uh, including my wife, of um, experiences they had with teachers that really impacted them. Yeah, and that they, like it's the same thing. They're still friends on Facebook, and and I had none of that. Um, really? No, I had none of that. And, and I think it's looking back, it, it's definitely it's definitely my fault. Yeah. Because I was such a punk skater kid that only wanted to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. That to me, all teacher. Felt like authoritative figures uh, trying to control what I do, yeah. almost like another parent. Even though they're not right, they're just yeah. doing their job. Um, and and they were, I'm sure that if I would have opened, like you said, if I would have opened myself up, yeah. they would have opened right back. It's yeah. just common sense that they would do that, and, and probably would have helped guide me even through me having a tough time learning um, the things that were taught in school. Yeah. But because I looked at them all as an authoritative figure, and I was oh, kind of a yeah. rebellish person. It, I didn't want to click. I, I didn't want to yeah. make the effort to click with them. Yeah, to, I wonder how much of that was like you moving from France because I would say I wasn't always that way. Like especially like in elementary, like I had some really great teachers that really reached out to me and took the time to like help me get out of my shell. I remember like man, my first grade teacher, like Mrs. Crows. Shout out to her, man, amazing teacher. But she was, um, you know. My brother taught me multiplication or something like that. And so I was like doing it in class. And she was just, um, she would just always point to me and go and like give me like a math problem or something. And then anybody that would walk into the room, she would like secretly like talk over my shoulder about how great I am. Like, and I feel like she would say it loud enough Mm -hmm. so that I can hear it. But also like, Almost well, that like goes into now. your that, that 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 definitely makes its its way deep into your brain. Though. Yeah, like she the fact that you can remember it. Yeah, the yeah, fact that you can remember built it. me up. Like it, I, it was an amazing. I still have like I still remember how she looked like back then. Like it was amazing. Like it it made me who I am. And she yeah, had this crazy belief in me. She always told me I was special. And I was just like, oh wow. Like, yeah. I guess I kind of. So maybe know. you got to tell that to all the kids. I tried to. Yeah. I tried to. Just to yeah. get, get... Yeah, because I never heard that uh, as a kid. And, and maybe I just... Even if they were ready to say that to me, a teacher, I probably wouldn't have taken it in anyway. Yeah. And I think I, I just made it hard on myself, really, by just yeah. being a kid who doesn't go to school, who doesn't like to study everything that's being taught. You can tell yeah. that my head's in the air thinking about yeah. something else. So I didn't make it easy on myself for a teacher to be like... Hey, let's help this kid, you know. Yeah. And maybe if they, even if they did, I probably hit them right back with with some something negative, so that they were like, "Well, I'm not even gonna help this kid right. because he's yeah. he's not trying to learn or listen to me," yeah. you know. Well, you came here at 14. Right? Yeah, so I came. Uh, grade, I was uh, no, I, I came here in sixth grade. Okay. But but there is a, a gap. There's definitely a challenge in that, like moving from one country to the other, where I didn't speak English. I mean, at 11, you're not a you're a kid, but you you're eleven. You know you 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 know how to have your friends. You have yeah. a social life and stuff like that as an eleven year old, and so the fact that you come here as an eleven year old, you're a developing teenager, yeah. and you don't know how to speak the language. So for about two years, I'm yeah. I'm learning English. So basically, for two years, like you could say sixth and seventh grade, I really had no education because I'm not worried about learning. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm worried about 
just how to speak English. Yeah. You know, I'm not I mean, worried that's about it. has got to be huge. Yeah, right? it, yeah it is. It's, a huge, it's a huge stop in education. It's two years of your life where you're mm-hmm. no longer... Because in France, I remember always keeping up, mm-hmm. you know, as far as school, like things yeah. were simple. Obviously, it's fourth, fifth grade, but yeah. you, some people fall back that early. I, I was yeah. fine. I was very fine. But then I, when I came here, it's like those two that two-year hiatus from learning where I was just more worried about learning English. Yeah. Well, by the time I get to eighth grade... I feel like I haven't learned anything in the last two years yeah. because I haven't. I've and, been learning the language. Instead. And not just like on an educational level, but on a social level. Like we're like learning how to communicate with, and with other kids, like how yeah. to talk to people and how to like make friends and yeah. stuff. Like I, I'm just guessing, but I'm guessing in those two years, you probably also didn't have a lot of like. No, not, not a ton of friends. I mean, I did have, I, I obviously, I did have friends. You know, one thing is like living in St. Paul, there's so many Hmong kids. Okay. And I never spoke Hmong uh, ever before I moved here to America. But then when I moved to America, I, I, I always understood Hmong. So that's a time in my life where I actually, I picked up Hmong really quick. Yeah. And I spoke Hmong for about a year or two, like very yeah. fluently. Yeah. And then as soon as I picked up English, I went back to my old French ways and I yeah. just dropped my Hmong completely. And now okay. I'm relearning my Hmong okay. in a way. We're going to do a Hmong episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, good luck. We're going to need subtitles for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, school was, uh, it was interesting. It was interesting. Yeah. Any any fun stories from school? Did you ever, were you, um, did you did you ever get, like, into a fight or a suspender or anything like that when you were um, in school? Yeah, so I did actually my senior year in in high school. Uh, I played football, I wrestled. Uh, it was my senior year, so, it, you know, we knew, I knew everybody yeah. at the school. Um, oh, well, we were talking about lunchrooms before interruption, right? And I was going to say, like, there's two lunchrooms. And what I didn't realize was there was a bad kid's lunchroom and then the good kid's lunchroom. And we never knew, but we always sat in the bad kid's lunchroom because this is where we sat since freshman year. Yeah. So we always just sat there all the way up to our senior year. And uh, I think that day, like, all the guys, like, Went out for lunch, and so it was just me and a bunch of like, uh, of uh, of my female friends, and so I think that day they decided to like throw something at our table. Yeah, and I was a little tired. I was I had my head down, and something hit me on the head, and I was like, "Yo, what the heck is going on?" I look up, you know, nobody's saying anything or doing anything. I look up and I see this kid throwing, throwing uh, shit at other people. Yeah, so I'm yeah. Like, All right, I know it's him, but I'm not about to go in confront him over something that he did like five minutes ago so then i put my head down again something hits me on the head again i'm like all right i know it's that guy mm-hmm. i get up i'm so pissed mm-hmm. i freaking grab uh like the little milk carton yeah yeah i chuck it at him i'm so mad i freaking hit the floor like two feet in front of me and <laughs> then it like rolls over there <coughs> and then uh you know i start walk. I, I start walking over there this motherfucker gets up and he's like six feet something. I'm yeah. five four. I'm looking up at him like, oh man, if I don't hit this dude, like I'm in trouble. Because if he hits me first, like it, it's not gonna be a good look. Good. Oh, uh, and then so I push him. He pushes me, and I'm standing, and there's like a little lunch table here. He pushes me, and I like fall <laughs> over on the table. I'm like, oh fuck, like this yeah. is not gonna go well. And then, of course, and then so I'm like, all right, I gotta hit this dude because if I don't, this ain't gonna go well for me. I hit the dude, boom, the dude kind of bends over, and he kind of, like, reaches, and then he, like, scratches me in my eye. And then, like, uh, I keep hitting him, and he's just kind of ducking at this point, you know. And so, thankfully for me, he didn't hit me back or anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I just kept swinging on him. And then eventually, like, the AD, the athletic director, man, uh, great guy. I love that guy. He came. He didn't even, like, pull me off or nothing. Like, I was just in the zone, so when he put his hand on me, he just kind of put his hand on my chest like this, and then I, I stopped immediately, because then I recognized, oh, shit, that's, uh, yeah. that was him, and then, and then, so I stopped, I was just like, hey, yeah, my bad, and then, uh, he was like, yeah, um, Pang, man, I remember him walking me up to the office, and he was like, Pang, man, um, I know you wrestled, and you play football, but I didn't know you had hands like that, yeah. I was like, 
Yeah, you know, I took three days. Though. Yeah, more time. That's also you for know? him to say though. He didn't yeah. just grill you right no, away because no. he probably knew you, right? He no. knew what kind of kid you probably Dude, were yeah. already. So yep. because I was a senior by then, like I said, I played two sports. I yeah. knew everybody in Lake, and then like I knew all the teachers. Um, I ended up getting suspended. The only guy that grilled me, my monk teacher. Oh uh, yeah. You know, and you know, which is fair. Which is yeah, fair. yeah. Which is fair. But then, um, it was like. We were getting ready to graduate or getting ready to finish all of our final projects. I remember uh, I had to come in on the weekend um, to, like, get ready for this test. One of my teachers, like, uh, I guess so when you're suspended, you're not, you cannot enter, like, school property at all. Mm. But one of my teachers was just like, no, I need you to come in Saturday, even though you're suspended through next week. Like, and I need you to work on this. And uh, because we were getting ready for to take some kind of big test that yeah, can yeah. Uh, give us like college credit, but so she like she she allowed me to come back in, help me with like a bunch of stuff. Yeah, like like a bunch of teachers gave me a lot of grace. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like and, you were. But but same thing. I will say it sounds like you have a lot of teachers that really helped you, and that's why you yeah. remember them. But yeah. you gave them reasons too as well because, you, like you said, you were open, you were willing to talk, you yeah. were engaging, you played sports, you kind of did what, uh, you know, like what a kid that I, if I saw today, I would I would want to engage that kid as well, yeah. Yeah. as opposed to me, I was just more, I was blocked off, you know. Oh, if you yeah. if you talk to me, as a teacher, I'm like. I ain't trying to talk to you. Yeah, you know? my, my teacher would always say, um, you know, she said I had a can I help you face. Yeah. Because you know, yeah, I'm yeah. always walking around. I'm always smiling at every, everybody. Uh, shoot, man, I remember after the fight, I went home. Um, I just walked home, you know, yeah. a couple blocks away. And they suspended me. I was just like, all right, cool. I get a couple of days off school, whatever. I just walked home. Then uh, I saw my neighbor. saw my neighbor that night. He went to school with us. Uh and he was just like, yeah, I told them not to mess with you, yada, yada, this and that. And, um, uh, like, the na- the all the neighbors, we were, like, pretty close. Like, we were, like, all, there was a couple of us uh, mm-hmm. in, at, the, at the same school, similar in age. Uh, so, shout out to them because they were really cool. But, yeah, uh, yeah like, um, I realized, I'm realizing now as I'm talking to you, it's just, like, how important it was just to be... I guess sociable, yeah, um, and how much that helped me along, yeah, like, and that like carried me through college and carried me through my professional career afterwards, and even now, yeah, that is a huge skill, um, because it is a skill, and sometimes more natural for some, maybe not as natural for others, but it is a huge skill—the ability to talk um, and make a, 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 a group of friends, a social yeah. group, and you know, it's always like when you see the kid in school who doesn't really talk too much. Um, sometimes those kids have a harder time because they yeah. don't have that social group, you know, they don't yeah. have the, the friends and then they feel a little bit awkward because there's the, yeah. and I kind of always felt like that. Yeah. I was always felt like, I'm that awkward kid that, that doesn't really talk to anybody, just mad at everything, mad yeah. at everyone. Like, and, and I, I see that now. And, uh, I saw that back then too, because like, I, I realized that I, I was very privileged to be, to have like a lot of people like help me out. And yeah. Help yeah. Me along. Um, and I was asked one time, like, if I would want my kids to grow up in that situation. Yeah. And, um, like, in the inner city schools. And I was lucky, but I also knew a lot of people that weren't. Like, I, yeah. I, I knew a lot right, of kids right. that just didn't have that social yeah. ability. And they couldn't navigate things. And they just struggled so much. Yeah. More. They were bullied a lot more. Um, they didn't get as much help from the teacher. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't know how to ask for help. They didn't even right, know how right. to like, sign up for sports and stuff like that. Um, and it was, it was really tough and really like a, a struggle. And so I was like, I saw that, and I, I, I don't want to say I don't want my kids to grow up like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, in a setting like that, I mean, there's gonna be bullying wherever you go, and there's gonna be kids that you know. Um, or, or or even adults that bully you, no matter where you go. So, but yeah, I was I was very fortunate. How about you? Like fights? I mean, yeah, I got you. Probably got into quite a few scuffles. No, not 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 too much. I mean, I was definitely a punk kid, but yeah. not too much. Just I think just freshman year. I, okay, you know, 
it, you know, 2003, the beginning of uh, yeah. online shit talking. And okay, is that Harding or at Harding? Yeah. Oh, that's so at Harding, the, when I went to Harding, I actually that I got into a fight there, got suspended, and then uh, uh, that same year I got. I wouldn't even call it arrested, but we skipped school, and then the cops brought us to down to the station. Mm -hmm. So my dad had to come pick me up from the station yeah. uh, twice. So twice, twice wow, my dad yeah. has to come pick me up from the police station yeah. uh, at a young age, and I get suspended for fighting. Yeah. Um, and which is, I think it's partly. I have never. I, I should ask my dad this, but it, that's probably the reason why we moved all the way to Elko, because that's yeah. like 15 minutes away. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and then when I went to Elko over there, you know, there was such a drastic change in school, um, and just the way the schools feel like. Just imagine St. Paul East Side, yeah, to Lakeville North yeah. suburbs, yeah, right. So you're in the inner city. Contrast, in the yeah, yeah, huge contrast. And so when I got to Lakeville, I didn't feel like I fit in over there either, yeah, because I'm a because I came from the city. So for me to go to Lakeville, I show up. Every single kid's got a car at 16, nice cars too, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't really feel like I fit in here either. And over there, I was the only Asian. I think there was maybe like, uh, there's one other monk student out of like 2,000 students. Yeah. You know, so. I Yeah, that would be tough because, yeah, early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of when we just started moving out into the suburbs. Yeah. Like getting yeah. out of the city. And I never felt uncomfortable when it comes to like race. I always, I grew up in France with no monk people anyway. So yeah. I never felt out of place there. But yeah, it was just different switching from a St. Paul school. To Lakeville. Now at Lakeville, I never got into fights. I never got suspended. Well, you were, I just you didn't go to school. I just didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I just didn't go to fights, school. Yeah. I just didn't go to school. I hated going to school. Um, and I mean, now I, I look at it all funny. Like now, you know, high school is their very formative years. You know, yeah. um, and they can really, they can, it, it can, it doesn't necessarily have to make you or break you, but it, it can for some people. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it was. Um, it was not a, a part of my life that, that, to be honest, I truly enjoyed. I enjoyed the age. I enjoyed yeah. 14 and 17, uh, yeah. but I didn't enjoy the experience 14 and 17 yeah. being in school. It just was too restrictive for me, and and, and I blame myself for that. because. Yeah. But I, not that if I knew better, of course, I would have done it differently. Yeah. But at the time going through it, I, I didn't know any better. And, um, yeah, it was not, high school was not really my favorite time, I think. I was right. not. I would not say that my peak times were my high school years. Yeah. You don't want it. To be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you don't want it to be. Sad. But sometimes you see that. Sometimes yeah. you see that. Sometimes you see the yeah. the high school QB uh, yeah. later on, and he's not doing as much. Oh you know? man, that that very well could still be me if yeah, I don't yeah. make it. Yeah, man, <laughs> if you don't make high school. Where my, <laughs> that where was my your best peak. Time. I was gonna say yeah. you did have some yeah. high high school years. Yeah. So did you? Yeah. So you went to prom, all those things too. Yeah. Yeah. I never did any of that. My wife. Now we were high school sweethearts. Oh okay. We met in high school. Um, so we were like, we, we've always been together then we got together like our sophomore year, okay. like middle of our sophomore year. Before then I was, uh, I was, the kids call it now a serial dater. Yeah. Where you, I guess, date a lot. Go on dates. Yeah. Um, but for, like, I wasn't like a player or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. For me, like it sounds corny, but I love I loved love. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Being in a relationship, right. like you know, whatever. I just wanted to be loved. Yeah, you know, yeah, as a yeah. Kid. And uh, so all like all my girlfriends like broke up with me and stuff like that. Uh, you know, sad story, boohoo. But uh, uh, look at me now. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we're all great friends, uh, and we were so young then. Um, but yeah, I met my girl, my wife now in in high school. Uh, it's so cool to like to be together for so long. It's mm -hmm. been like 15, 16 Yeah, years that's now. a long time. Yeah, and so we've seen each other grow up, and she's always pushed me to be better. Uh, and I think she saw the type of person I was in high school. She was a little bit more different. Like, she was a little bit more closed off. But, um, and we were always opposites, but we always kind of, like, she she pushed me to focus on school a little bit more. I pushed her to get out of her, her circle a little bit more. So it worked out in, in its own little weird way. Yeah. Um. But I'm pretty blessed. Yeah, so I had all those, like, high school experiences. Yeah. Um, See, I yeah. had none of those. I didn't do a single school dance. I didn't <sighs> walk. I didn't walk. I didn't walk yeah. graduation. I've never walked graduation. Really? Nope. Didn't walk. Didn't do any school dances. Dude. Didn't do any school spirit. You never would have caught me with a Lakeville shirt on. Yeah. Literally, I was an outcast, as outcast as it gets wow. for a kid. Yeah. But, I mean, it just goes to show that you can still, you can be 
all that and still turn out all right. Because yeah, yeah, because high it. school is high school is just high school, but it's yeah. so tough because I don't have children. You do, um, but I think about the future when I will have children, and yeah. and I'm so like, um, it's gonna sound bad. I'm not anti school. I understand yeah. how important it can be, especially depending yeah. on which career field you choose. Sometimes you, yeah. if you're gonna get a PhD, you got to get a PhD. Yeah. There's no way around it. Entrepreneur is different. You can yeah. you can just kind of do it, but so I definitely respect school. But I've always just been like, not anti school. I don't want to say that, but just. Do it my own, your own way. Like yeah. I'm really, yeah. I'm, I really am, am about that a lot. Um, so it's yeah. really tough. I always think when I have kids, what am I gonna say to them? You know, like yeah. I almost feel like I'm gonna go back and get a yeah. bachelor's degree just for the sake of telling my children go get. Because I'm gonna tell them yeah. to go to school. I'm not gonna tell them not to go to yeah. school. I already know. Yeah. I'm gonna tell them to go to school. Like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. But it's like, oh, maybe I'll just have to hide what I really feel about school until they're like 20. And then I'll tell them, like, hey, now I just want to tell you how I truly feel about school. No, 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 no. Here's the thing about being having kids. You always just want to be honest. Yeah. Oh, speak just tell them how you experience. feel. Sorry about that sucking interruption. I had a huge restroom. Forgot what I was talking about. But I think we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Me and, me and my wife um, dated in high school. Um yeah, very fortunate. Yeah, I guess. Yes, yeah, sorry, Dory. Or, no, like, yeah. During our interruption, like I realized, I was just thinking about that man, and I couldn't stop laughing. But yeah, I did peak in high school, man. Those were my best years. Ah, oh, dude, this is sad. But like I was saying, like <laughs> as long as you take that as a step and you keep moving forward with it, like, yeah, peaking is never. Well, first of all, I think you're always going to grow. But, yeah, I always make it. I think for me, too, one thing that's helped me, like, <clears throat> work harder as I get older is is I realize just how much I didn't do in high school as well. Yeah. So it's almost like a it's, – it's, it's weird to say it's not, it's not unhealthy for me, but I do keep a chip on my shoulder because I knew I was that kid. Yeah. You know, I know that I was the kid that, that got bad grades. I know I'm this kid that didn't – go to school and I know that I'm the kid yeah. by society standards as a high schooler I was probably the kid who everybody thought for sure this kid's failing right, for sure right. yeah. you know and so that's always been a chip on my shoulder that I keep every day not in an unhealthy way you know not not like that but just in a way to say like hey let me show that that high school meant nothing to to me but that that didn't define who I am either yeah. you yeah. know so I try to use it in that way but sorry I'm laughing now because uh yeah on the opposite end of the spectrum, I have to keep grinding. I have to keep moving. Otherwise, I am. They're the gonna guy be like, "Hey, what happened to that guy who yeah. played, uh, who was a wrestler and played football yeah. and had was all on the teacher's hey, side?" And, and you know, yeah, to fit the stereotype even more, I played quarterback. I was third string. Oh, dang! Yeah, QB is QB, man. Yeah, I was just, the, ta- QB. I was just the tackling dummy though. But <coughs> yeah, like if I don't do anything now, man, I am the guy that peaked yeah. in high school. Like. Oh man, what a tragic story! Well, you, you had Leatherman jackets and all that. No, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. I was too poor for that. Oh, okay. I was too poor for. That. You know what I realized um, in high school too? Like, oh, well, in middle school, um, in middle school, um, my father was already out of the picture. My mother had multiple sclerosis, uh, so uh, she just wanted, um, she needed a lot of help in and out, like her bed and out in in the house. Uh, she so she just wanted us there. My fa- my brother went to college and was working a full time job. Like my sister was in college, my brother just and then my other brother just left the navy. Uh, that was like around the sixth or seventh grade, and so from the sixth to seventh grade on, I just did whatever I wanted. Like yeah. I wasn't a bad kid, and my family like they they taught me all, like right from wrong, but um, I never real like I realize now like. I never really had to ask for permission for anything. Yeah. Uh, I just kind of did what I wanted. Like, when I played football, I just got the paper in the mail to show up on this date and do X, Y, and Z. And that's what I did. When it came to, like, athletic fee, like, they have these things where you can volunteer to help pay for your athletic fee. So I just kind of did all that, like, myself. And I realized, like, as an adult now, I still kind of have that same attitude where it's like, I don't ask for permission, like, yeah. I wanted a bodybuild. I just started doing that yeah. in high school. I wanted to wrestle. I just did that. I got my first job. My first day, I walked. 
from Minneapolis to like Golden Valley, uh, you know, just to just just to work. Uh, and like now I wanted a beekeep. Right. And I just got it where I think I talk to a lot of my friends like my age now and they just um, <coughs> they just find and I'm not trying to bad talk anybody, but I, I'm just I just noticed a difference in my attitude where I was just like um, I, I I felt like I could do like because I was instilled with this crazy confidence early on and a lot of belief yeah uh, in myself and then also like I had to go I made all of these decisions on my own terms and uh, I made a lot of mistakes and I had to reflect and learn from all that which uh, which taught me a lot but yeah, like as an adult now, like if I wanted to do something, I just kind of do it. Yeah, I still kind of carry that that attitude, which is good and bad because yeah. now I, I get myself into a lot of trouble. Yeah, too. but it's good too because you do have to learn that somewhere. Like for me, I learned to become like that as well, but not. It was not in high school. It was later, yeah. you know. Uh, it was through the military where I kind of learned that. But yeah, no, before that, I, I always needed some guidance. Like I wasn't going to be the one that goes and step into something uncomfortable. Yeah, I stayed in what, what I was comfortable in. But if you think about it, man, skating has to, like it was somewhat of that on on to, on, on on some level, right? Where <laughs> you, you learn a new skill and to like obsess over. Yeah, it. I definitely say that that part is uh, that part. I I always had that part uh, as part of my personality. It's yeah. like slight obsession with stuff. Yeah, like when I was before that, I was really big into soccer. Before yeah. I got into skating, and that was like my obsession. Like, if you walked into my room as an eight year old, my entire room was filled with just all the ath- all the pro soccer players, which I yeah. looked up to. And when it was skating, it was the same. And so I always set a standard of like, from an early age, I can remember always setting a standard of like, that's who's good, that's who everybody loves. Okay, I'm gonna try to be as good as that, yeah. you know. And so I carry that now today too, where it's like when I do my business, I don't just. It's not just about the the financial gains. I mean, obviously, you you yeah. create a business to have some financial gains and to yeah. maintain your life, but a lot of it is still like who's really good in my industry, right. like who's good in my industry that I can look up to, and who can like I need somebody that's that that shows me that creates a path for me that I can look at and say okay I, I want to attain like that goal I want to get there yeah and, but in school there's just nothing to me interesting now if you would have had a rollerblading class I bet you I would have killed it in school yeah, you know yeah. but <clears throat> it just wasn't what wasn't what it was so I think that's a that's important right I'm, I'm a parent now so I'm always looking at okay what were some things that worked out in my life what were some things that worked out in my wife's life um and what can what can I try to recreate for my kid? And maybe what you're saying is just like it's it's a finding a healthy obsession, yeah. And working towards getting better at something is more valuable than school because school yeah. is 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 very rigid and you know yeah. it works for some people and it doesn't. And in some and it works very well in some career fields and and others. It right, doesn't. right. It depends um, which career field you jump into. So as well. maybe it's more important. As as a parent to just instill and encourage a young person's, uh, I guess, uh, hobby. Yeah, yeah, you know? and ambition, and, ambition. I think ambition yeah. is if you can put that in a child early on, like, hey, yeah. find something that you like and try to be really good at it. You know, try to try to be really good at it, and then maybe yeah. like telling yeah. your kids, like, hey, let's uh, let's look up people who like what you, who do what you do and and that are really good at it. Like, how can you become? good like them too you know and then and then they can take that same skill that same map to try to be good to different areas that's kind of how that's kind of how i've done it i guess yeah it's not super structured it's just kind of you see something that you like you see someone that you like that does what you do and does it well and you say how do how do they do it yeah you know how do they do it because you learn a lot in that and over time you obviously develop your own style but yeah but you do have to have something that you can replicate yeah. in a way yeah replicate in a way yeah well that that's huge man and i think like wow like that's why that, that's why this is an amazing podcast <laughs> like i think about it. like you always kind of know this in the back of your head but you you know you don't put it into words um like i always knew what allowed me to be somewhat successful yeah but like i never been able to articulate that or or until this conversation here yeah. where it's like, oh, yeah, that was that thing or that, like, I can isolate it to that moment where it allowed me to really excel. Yeah. Um, but 
<clears throat> yeah, no, good conversation. Yeah. We we it was a lot about high school today. We wanted to talk about high school because um as we get older, we never talk about high school and, and I get it. Most people yeah. are like, we don't want to talk about high school. High school is like twenty years ago, dude. Yeah. Why are you t- talking to me about high school? But the truth is in high school we learn a whole lot about ourselves. Yeah. We go through a lot of challenges, and the truth is, as we become adults, we can be kind of like we were in high school or completely different. It's different for everybody, but it is a very formative time as when you're going through it, right? When you're that age, super formative. It's a a dark time, and you know, like for yourself and for other people like me, you peak. Yeah, you peak, and that was the best times of your life, and you're always thinking about it. No, man, you you, you get many more peaks (laughs) coming your way. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think that uh cover uh most of episode seven. You know, it was a good little conversation. We yeah. wanted to keep it kinda it, it's it had some serious in it, but it was also kinda light. Just to um just to share our experiences and yeah. and uh, I know that uh it'll be different than what many of you guys have gone through, but it'll also be similar in a lot of ways. I think yeah. we can all connect in that experience because we've all been through high school yeah. and I think maybe you might find that you were a little bit more similar to Peng or maybe you were a little so- more similar to me yeah. or maybe you're completely different but either way that's that's our high school right there yeah. for y'all awesome alright yeah, thank you out. for sharing yeah next episode alright we'll episode. check out to the next one see you guys thanks for listening yeah thank you guys how cool is that like how different